So next up, we have the executive director of a Portland-based nonprofit committed to saving forest and saving lives. Please help me welcome Jonathan Jennings of Health and Harmony. Not my first punk act to follow. That was impressive. Thank you. Now, let's see. Voila. Okay, here's the upshot, everybody. Biological life as we know it on planet Earth is at risk of becoming unrecognizably altered because one species, ours, is destroying the Earth's life-giving systems. We've created a climate crisis, and nearly every ecosystem on the planet, aquatic and terrestrial, is in jeopardy. I want to take a quick survey of the room, if I can. Please raise your hand if the conduct of your business heals the planet. Great. Fantastic. Scientists are united in telling us we, we have about 11 years to change our behaviors, to take immediate and meaningful actions, actions specifically that reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that we spew into the environment by about 50%. Now, if we do that, we're going to stabilize the global climate, and Mother Nature, as we've known her, is not going to collapse. Humanity has a really simple choice. We either change the business as usual level of extraction, consumption, and pollution, or not. And if we don't, we know what awaits. Global temperatures will continue to climb. Now, popular media would have us believe that we're doomed. You can't open a newspaper or a magazine or turn on the TV today without seeing some new catastrophic diagnosis. But we're not doomed, emphatically not, because solutions exist. Every B Corps in the Pacific Northwest is a solution in action, just like Health and Harmony, our organization, is a solution in action. In fact, we're really quite similar, B Corps and Health and Harmony. You marry the power of the corporate sector with the purpose of the nonprofit sector to build inclusive economies. We marry the power of civil society with the potential of the corporate sector to build restorative economies, specifically economies that, verse, that reverse rainforest deforestation. B Corps have started to change the very nature of the way business is conceived of and conducted on our planet, and for that, you guys are rock stars. I want to applaud you and thank you. Today, though, I also want to challenge you, because we have to do more. Together, we have to go farther, faster. The reality is, 25 years of the triple bottom line haven't come close to preventing corporations from dismantling ecosystems and jeopardizing the Earth's ability to sustain itself. Now, obviously, that's in part because not enough corporations, big or small, have committed themselves to triple bottom line impact accounting. I also believe, however, as some of you, that it's because triple bottom line lacks a necessary understanding of ecology and a necessary emphasis on the only bottom line that matters, and that's the, pl the planet's health, the health of its ecosystems, the health of its grasslands, tundras, coral reefs, rainforests, deserts, rivers, and oceans. Human civilization, our health, and the well-being of our economy evolved with these ecosystems, and our continued existence depends on these ecosystems functioning properly for our food, our clean air, our clean water, our physical and mental health, and for the, the molecules that chemists use to create medicines that cure backache and our more serious diseases. And I'm not alone in this critique of the triple bottom line. Last year, the man who coined the term in concept, John Elkington, said that it was time for a rethink, an urgent rethink. His exact words were these, Triple bottom line and none of the sustainability frameworks will be enough as long as they lack the suitable pace and scale. The necessary radical intent, he said, needed to regenerate our biosphere. He's saying corporations should exist first and foremost to build restorative economies in which the design, production, transport, sale, 
use and disposal of your goods and services restore our oceans, forests, and rivers rather than destroy them? So here's my question again. Does the conduct of your business heal the planet? Is the raison d'etre of your bottom line to restore the Earth's life-giving systems? If it's not, I suggest it should be, because the only bottom line that matters for the future of life on the planet is the health of planet Earth. Now, during my career, I've seen firsthand how our utter neglect of planetary health has decimated societies, economies, and lives. Before joining Health and Harmony about two years ago, I spent about 15 years with a humanitarian organization called Doctors Without Borders, responding to crises all over Africa, South Asia, former Yugoslavia. Now, these are three of the last humanitarian crises I was involved with. Think for a second, what links these three crises? I'll tell you, the root causes of each one of them includes environmental degradation, global heating, and climate change. I felt like I was waking up every morning going to work dealing with the humanitarian fallout of a sick planet, which is precisely what I was doing. The planet is the patient now, and the vital signs aren't great. So whether we're in the public sector, the nonprofit sector, or the B Corps sector, I believe the most vital work that we can do today, indeed I think it's the work that we must be doing, is work that ensures every species on the planet has a planet that they can live on. This is what our Health and Harmony team is doing. We are protecting rainforests so that the earth can breathe. Now, Christian, if you can make this thing sing, I would be greatly appreciative. You could hear chainsaws all the time, illegally logging in the national park. And now, you can't hear them anywhere. The reason is, we did something crazy. So we actually listened. They told us that what they would need would be access to high quality, affordable health care, so they wouldn't have to log to pay for health care, and they needed training in sustainable agriculture, particularly in organic farming. So that's what we did. We had an 88% drop in logging households, and we've had a drop in under five mortality. The environment is healthier, and the humans are healthier and happier. We are so excited about replicating this model. There are many other places that we would like to work. So let's work together and make it possible. So you're the first audience in the world to see that film. Um, We focus on tropical rainforests because the simplest, most effective, and least expensive way of stopping global heating in the next 11 years is to protect and expand the planet's forests. By some estimates, rainforests absorb about a third of all of the carbon dioxide that we spew into the atmosphere. These forests are the remarkably proficient lungs of our planet. The film introduced you to our first program, 12 years old now, on the island of Indonesian Borneo at a 250,000 acre national park called Gunung Palung National Park, where 15 years ago, we were losing tree cover in the park at an alarming rate. Now when it comes to reversing deforestation, the drivers are multifaceted and complex. So we rely on the people that live in these forests to know how best to protect them. Local and indigenous communities are the experts, not us. So we enter the rainforest communities and we practice what we call radical listening. We start by asking a simple question. We say, you are the guardians of this precious rainforest that is so valuable to the whole planet. How might the world community assist you to live in balance with this rainforest as a way of thanking you for your guardianship of it? We learn from the people of Gunung Palung that they had no other ways of making money other than to log. 
They were doing it for economic reasons, but specifically, they were doing it to cover the cost of their health care, the cost of transport to faraway clinics, and the cost of treatment and diagnosis once they arrived. These communities concluded that they could stop illegally logging within the rainforest if they had access to affordable quality health care and if they had training in organic farming and other alternative livelihoods. And that's exactly what we did. We invested precisely in their locally designed solution and we took a holistic approach. We established a medical center staffed entirely by Indonesians and we initiated trainings in organic farming conducted by expert organic farmers from the neighboring island of Java. And they were right. Their solution is working remarkably. Since 2007, more than 1,200 former loggers have become farmers and we've seen a drop of 88% in the rate of illegal logging inside the national park. Infant mortality has dropped more than 60%. Logging of the primary rainforest has completely stopped, which means between 2,500 and 3,000 endangered, critically endangered, Borneo orangutans are having their habitat protected. Now, to ensure that everyone has access to our medical facilities and to our care, People can pay for their care at our clinic with non-cash payment options. People can pay with manure that we use in the organic farming program, and they can pay with rainforest tree seedlings, which we use in our reforestation program. Now, significantly since 2007, we've also seen 50,000 acres of rainforest regrow. To put this in perspective, if Gunung Palung National Park had been logged and burnt, which could have ha continued happening had we not intervened, the amount of carbon dioxide emitted into the Earth's atmosphere would be the same as 14 years worth of carbon dioxide emitted from the city of San Francisco. So thanks to their work in Borneo, our air quality here is a little better and our climate is a little bit more stable. On the shoulders of this success in Borneo, the Health and Harmony team is now attempting to replicate and scale our impact. Last year, we opened a second project site at another massive rainforest in Borneo. As I speak, we have a team in Madagascar securing the agreements that we need to be operational there. And in about 10 days, we're gonna send another team to the Brazilian Amazon to conduct a feasibility assessment there. We have a decade plus or minus to change our behaviors, to stop global heating, and avoid the worst impacts of the climate crisis. This may be the greatest challenge that humanity has faced during our time on this planet. So I ask you again, does the conduct of your business heal the planet? Net zero carbon emission targets are praiseworthy, but they're not going to be enough. Can you do more? We've got to build restorative economies. The act of doing business must improve nature and not just limit its negative impacts on nature. To truly shift the needle, as the B Corps community seeks to do, to go farther faster, I would like to suggest to the B Corps of Pacific Northwest that you consider taking the fo these, these following three actions. First, reframe the triple bottom line to become planetary healers. Make the very reason you do business be the restoration of the forests, rivers, and skies around you. At the very least, prioritize increasing your annual environmental impact score. But if you want to go even farther, could you give variable discounts on your goods and services based on the carbon footprint of your clients and your customers? Second, measure what matters. Make carbon a primary, concern, uh, primary currency of your bottom line accounting. And don't just offset your business's carbon emissions to net zero. Actually restore carbon into nature. We've got to leave these ecosystems better off than they were when you started your businesses. And expand your carbon math to your suppliers. Number three, partner creatively with your neighbors in the Pacific Northwest, including the indigenous communities in the Pacific Northwest and business-minded nonprofits like Health in Harmony. Invest in re restoration carbon projects with planetary health organizations like Health and Harmony and integrate the wisdom of indigenous peoples into your business model. They have the closest connection to the ecosystems here. They know how best to live in balance with them. 
We're gathered today at the Red. This is the breeding ground of Salmon Nation. As citizens of the Salmon Nation bioregion and as beneficiaries of the ecosystem services of this phenomenal place we call home, the B Corps community here has a responsibility, but also a great opportunity to assume your place in this special bioregion and to help restore it. Your game-changing potential cannot be overstated, and as part of humanitarian's efforts to halt this unprecedented climate crisis, we're counting on B Corps to proliferate and succeed. So thanks very much. It's been a privilege for you guys to invite Health and Harmony to this event, and we really appreciate your attention. Cheers.